I've got a nifty little plant root hack that will allow you to repot your root bound plant into the same pot, which saves you space in your home and some money in the process. In an ideal world, plants should be repotted every spring to prevent them becoming root bound and suppressing their growth. And this is something I do every single spring. When the roots of a plant have taken over the pot, there is no longer enough soil in the pot to hold on to moisture and nutrients to give to the plant. Plants need three micronutrients to remain healthy, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus as well as some beneficial micronutrients. If a plant is starved of these nutrients because it is pot bound then its growth will be inhibited. It will develop yellow leaves and will generally look unhappy. Do you have a plant that is particularly thirsty at the moment? Lift it out of its pot and check the roots. Chances are it's root bound. Let me know if this is the case in the comments. The roots are unable to absorb the water you give it, so it needs watering much more often than if it had a healthy amount of soil in the pot. One of my Chinese money plants needs water every three days, which is much more often than normal. So I check the roots and lo and behold, it's root bound. Now the normal solution to this is to take the plant out of the pot, discard the old soil, untangle the roots, and then repot it into a pot that is one or two sizes bigger than the existing pot. This gives the plant a new lease of life and pushes out strong growth during the growing season. But what if we don't want to repot into a larger pot? You may be happy with the plant the way it is and you might not want to go out and buy yet another pot. Doing this with lots of plants can cost a fair bit of money, especially if we like buying pretty porcelain pots and it takes up more and more space in our home. You may have a large ficus plant that you've repotted a few times in the past, potting up into larger and larger pots, but eventually enough is enough. You simply don't want to keep potting them up into bigger and bigger pots because they're big enough already. All plants will get to a point where you can no longer up pot. So what's the solution then? The solution, plant friends, is to root prune your plant. Before you click off the video, hear me out. It's a little known fact, but you are able to prune the roots of your plant and it won't die. In fact, they respond really well to a good root pruning, as much as they respond well to having the foliage pruned. Root pruning is covered in lots of books about plants, such as House Plants for Dummies, so it's a road well traveled. Don't get me wrong, it does take some nerve to go hacking away at the roots of your beloved plant, especially if it's an expensive plant, such as the Philodendron Pink Princess, but this can save a plant's life. I've started doing this after I watched a fantastic video from Everything Plants, and the results have been great, as they were for him. Go check out Everything Plants' channel for more planty content. I have a green syngonium that I keep on my kitchen windowsill next to my Philodendron Birkin and Marble Queen and a couple of other smaller plants, and it was very root bound. Space is at a premium at this location, so I didn't want to repot the plant into a bigger pot because there isn't enough space for it. So I made the jump, I pruned the roots and put it back into the same pot with some fresh soil and it's been loving life ever since. So what's the best way to root prune your plant to ensure maximum success? Firstly, grab your plant. If when you grab your plant, you feel that the roots are bulging at the sides of the pot, then your plant is in a desperate need of a repot. The roots are literally bursting out of the pot. The same applies if you can see lots of roots crawling out of the pot through its drainage holes. The roots have clearly outgrown the pot it is in. Carefully take the plant out of the pot, have a look at the roots. If the root ball of the plant is majority roots and you can't see much soil or feel much moisture, then it's time for a prune. A good rule of thumb is to cut away the bottom third of the roots at a time. Don't be scared here, you can cut away the fine roots as well as the thicker roots and your plant will be fine. You can afford to be aggressive with your plant. Place your plant onto a workbench and grab yourself a serrated knife or a decent pair of pruners and cut off the bottom third. Make sure whatever you're using to make the cut is clean. Otherwise, you risk introducing bacteria to the roots and this can lead to fungal and disease problems for your plant. I like using a serrated knife because it takes a nice clean cut and ensures the roots are cut nice and clean. You can even cut away some of the roots on the side of the root ball from the top to make more room in the pot for fresh soil. As long as some roots remain, the plant will bounce back and continue growing. A pro tip that I've mentioned in a previous video is to not bother untangling the roots. The plant will find a way to spread itself out into the new soil by itself without you needing to untangle the roots for it. I find this to be a great time saver. Prepare the same pot that the plant was in with some fresh soil at the bottom. I simply use three parts potting soil to two parts perlite 
And you can easily make this yourself without having to buy premium soil mixes. You need a potting soil with good drainage for strong, healthy roots. Add your plant to the pot and make sure that the crown of the plant, the part where the plant meets the soil line, is at soil level. You don't want to bury the crown of the plant with soil because this will suffocate the plant. And equally, you don't want it sitting proud of the soil because the roots just underneath the crown will need soil. Backfill around the root ball with your soil mix. Now I like to tap and bounce the pot on the table to get rid of any air gaps and then continue to fill with soil. This ensures all the roots of the plant have good soil around them. Pack the soil around the root ball, but try not to go too tightly because this will create compaction in the soil, which will prevent good drainage. Next, give the plant a good drink. I like to sit my plant in a saucer and water until it fills up and then let it sit there for a couple of hours so that the soil and roots are completely saturated. Your root bound plant will probably be dehydrated, so it needs a good drink to set it up properly going forwards. If you can, keep your plant in a bright spot in your home. Although root pruning is great for your plant, there is an element of shock it will be going through, so give it lots of natural light to allow it to photosynthesize and store energy. Now don't worry if you experience some leaf drop. A few of the leaves on my green syngonium yellowed. I wasn't panicking, I promise. But this has since stopped, and lovely new green leaves have pushed through. The great thing about root pruning is that it's highly beneficial for a tired house plant. Even if you repot your plant into a bigger pot, if it's looking tired and in need of a rejuvenation, it's well worth cutting away some of the roots. This cuts away old roots that are possibly rotting and no longer doing much for the plant which are then replaced with newer, healthier roots. Now the best time to prune the roots of your plant will be early spring. Avoid doing this in the depths of winter. Many plants go dormant during the winter, so root development is limited, much like leaf development is. While this won't necessarily harm your plant, wait until the spring and your plant will quickly bounce back and push out healthy new roots and foliage. If you have a plant that grows rhizomes in the soil from which the stems grow, such as the ZZ plant, then avoid cutting into the rhizomes. This has potential to cause dieback on the stems that are attached to the rhizome that you cut. I've got three fantastic plant hacks that go against conventional wisdom that will boost the health of your plants and save you valuable time. So make sure you click on the link here.